Hey folks, welcome back. Ford Explorer 1995 windshield washer uh, <clears throat> doesn't work. So we're gonna go through um, how to troubleshoot that and what, what you need to do. Okay, so obviously that you know there's fuses, relays, um, switches, and all that kind of stuff. But one of the first things um, I like to do in a situation like this is just see uh, which way you're possibly going to go. So we're going to turn this uh, key on here, you know, and we notice that the the wipers do come on, and the wiper switch all functions as it's supposed to. Maybe. This intermittent deal doesn't seem like it wants to do its do its job, so there's a clue right there. But one other thing here is, you know, push the button in, nothing happens. Even though if the pump didn't work, or if it was out of fluid or whatever, um, the wiper should come on. You know, like in the case of this Ford right here, you know, even if you just bump it, they come on just the one time. You bump it again. I've done that several times, just normal driving. Push and hold it. Pump comes on. Wipers come on for about, what, four times, I think? Three, four times? So there's your first troubleshooting. Figure out which way we need to go. Uh, this one here could be looking at a uh, switch on the dash there but we're gonna have to troubleshoot that to uh, <clears throat> confirm it and I will show you the best money-saving tip for do-it-yourself troubleshooting to save you from having to um, just replace parts that you think it might be because you could replace this part you could replace the next part you could replace the next part and finally get to three four parts and it's like I still haven't fixed my problem you've spent a ton of money on parts and a ton of your time replacing them <clears throat> this that and the other let me show you what uh, you need to do go on the old uh, interweb and just on Google type in Mitchell DYI this will get you to this particular area not exactly this one but it'll have you sign up for an account and all that kind of stuff um, I use this sometimes but I also have the uh, pro version of it but I do use this because it has some different I mean I've got a pro version of uh, Identifix but um, this one I use when it's got different uh, I look and see if it's got different um, schematics and all that kind of stuff on here um, still got a few vehicles on here that I can I can use I'm gonna click add new vehicle and we're gonna choose 1995 well you'll be able to do all this I'll pause this I just had to bypass all of my payment information because you'll pay for this but this is what it is it's 20 bucks there's different this is for one month they've got where you can do it longer or anything like that but um, depends on how much you think you're gonna work on your your vehicle or whatever but twenty dollars is um, you know not a whole lot of money to uh, find the exact right problem and we'll show you how to do it so we just kind of click in here and submit order okay so these are all the vehicles on here you obviously like say this 2002 Ford pickup let's say it came back in expired I can go right over here and I can just go extend and I can do another payment on here uh, this 99 Dodge pickup has uh, five days left on it same with the uh, 07 Ford Focus and you know plenty of other things going on here I haven't checked out too many vehicles but 1995 Explorer it's got 32 days left We'll click on that. We're going to go, you can go to uh, service, technical technical service bulletins. It's kind of old, so it's not really, may not really pertain to this, but anyways, we're going to go into repair. Usually you can start, you can start with wiring diagrams if you want, but let's start with like theory of operation and all that kind of stuff. So you can go here to accessories, equipment, because you got cruise control, you got door locks, anti-theft, gauges, instrument, heated glass defoggers, mirror seats, steering column switches, windows, Wiper washer system, that's what we want. Click that. Okay, and then we got, sometimes it'll have more things here, but looks like it just has one choice. And gives you 
your description and operation. I'll give you a chance to read that. Testing gives you some cautions and um, pinpoint test, all this kind of stuff. Hopefully this little windshield washer does not work. That's going to be our first one. Okay, the way this works here is, um, you know, let's say you had these wipers work with the key out and you go pinpoint test H. Takes you right to this. Actually, it's not quite on the... Oh, wait a minute. There it is right there. You know, tells you what's that but if you um, you know can go, can click this here and go to test A but I'm gonna do it right here inspect fuses uh, pinpoint test A windshield washer does not work expect fuses connections and wiring so we'll go do that first okay so we don't have an owner's manual so we're gonna go just use the back deal here and we're gonna go right back to uh, this, um, this is after the repair, you know, we got back into our main deal. Like, remember, we went, went clicked over right here to wiper washer systems. Okay, sorry if this uh, video is just kind of all over the place. I had people walk in and needing things or whatnot. We checked our fuses, we kind of knew they were going to be good because of the rear washer back there that works and everything. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you where the uh, relay like we're going to go through the uh, schematic a little bit later on um but first thing is you know obviously we got this deal right here the wipers do come on but they don't you know push this forward nothing happens so um we're going to come in here and we're going to connect to the gym module so this is you know but beginnings of the obd2s you know 93 four ish i don't know exactly when they 92 maybe for some of them um, I did have a 96 Ford F-250 in here, and it did not have OBD-2. Anyways, so we're going to go here and read these, read some fault codes in here. And sorry about the light. So we do have a wiper switch uh, circuit fault that's talking about this right here. And then we do notice that we got this uh, key on. Uh, key on engine off demand test. So we do have the key on because we're communicating with it right now. And this is just telling you that the once the doors shut, so we're gonna shut the door, which is probably a good thing anyways to get that damn dinger to shut off. I thought them dingers would go off when you had the key on, but anyways. Um yeah, so we just hit okay. And I think well we did it already. <laughs> Just one or there it goes. All right, so there we got pumpage going and wipers going. Need new wiper blades and we're running it faster. So that right there pretty much tells me that our circuit for our uh, relay and everything works as um, it needs to. Now we got a uh, wiper selection circuit fault and a selection switch circuit fault. I bet you we have a bad switch. Um, and power window relay circuit fault. Um, that might have something else to do with it. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, but anyways, the gem module is located, like, I think inside. I think you have to go pull this panel off here, pull the radio out, and it's, like, somewhere in here. Um, if you were to do actual testing on it and stuff. Um, we're going to do some more actual testing, I think, on the switch. And... Um, but anyways, uh, because of this test working and, and making everything work, well, we know that the system works. We know that the pump works. We know that the relay works because the gem module is what we're connected to here. And the gem module is turning on the relay, which is in turn turning on the pump, which is pumping the water out. And then the gem module is also operating the wipers and doing that. So um, one other thing I did notice that we have going on here is, is let's see, you, you turn this thing to, uh, let's go to this line right here, which is the uh, intermittent, but it's the highest right there. Wipers come on. Should come on right about now again, because that's the fastest, you know. 
and nothing happens. But we do get full continuous. You know, and there's other things you can do. Pretty much, I mean, if you're going to be working on electrical stuff with anything that's, you know, 95 or newer, 94 or newer, um, you pretty much need to get some kind of a bi-directional scan tool. I mean bi-directional is one that doesn't just read codes, but it actually makes things work. Because, um, you know, you can come over here and actuation test, and you got all these different things that you can test. And, you know, like here's the water pump relay control. Go into here, and then we just click to on. And there's just our relay pumps. We know that that's working. And if it's working through this scanner and all that stuff, it's going through the gem module. The gem module's doing all of it. And that's, you know, what we got going on. So, yeah, definitely needs a new wiper blades. But anywho, let me show you where, and let's go through that uh, schematic a little bit. Okay, so we took all of these things off. Um, you know, that goes down in there to get a little bit better access to show you. You know, here's the cover for the relay box. And there's two other relays down in here. I don't know what these two do, but this little one right here is the uh, relay for um, your pump. But your pump is down in there. You see that white colored wire that's in the pump. The pump's right there. And obviously your tank. So one thing I did do was when I was looking, you know, at the wiring schematic, <clears throat> um, not sure if we ran through this or not. Um, you got the interior fuse panel, which is here inside the pickup, and we had fuse 12 and I believe uh, 16. These two fuses, we actually checked them just to make sure. We're pretty sure they were working because we got a couple things going on here. You got fuse uh, 16, and then you got fuse 12. So your fuse 16, we're pretty sure that was working because that comes out here to your wiper run relay and your wiper high and low relay, wiper motor obviously because you got power going down here, you know, going down here to your wiper motor, uh, which on this car is that thing right there. We know all that stuff's good because everything's working good with that. And then we know that fuse is good. Um, we've got this fuse coming out of here, the inter internal fuse panel. we got two wires coming off of it. And we got this wire coming off here. we got the lift gate wiper. That's your rear wiper on the back window. And that washer system and wiper system is also working on this car. So we know, we, I knew these fuses were good, but still just checked it anyways. And so what we got here is we got this... Uh, front washer pump motor relay. That is that little guy right there. <clears throat> so you can see we've got power coming in, coming in right here, and it's gonna come onto this point right here. This is the coil, this is what makes the relay click, click. This is what actually does it. This is what actually clicks and makes contact. So you got power coming in right here, and so when this relay energizes this moves over here and now completes this circuit and brings power down here to your washer pump motor this just goes straight to uh how are we at? straight to ground so if this was like this um that's just going straight to ground right side of engine compartment so it's grounded somewhere over there or you know engine compartment so it must be over there and so what we got Coming out of here, we're gonna start now. We've kind of moved from up here. We wanna check all that kind of stuff. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna pull this relay out and you know see that you've got all of that, that stuff there. So like one of these terminals, let's get a light. Okay, so we got one of the terminals um, right there. It's kind of a little bit bright with the way that thing works but the two ones that are that are uh well there's actually three that are horizontal the middle one's not being used that's um these here that's your coil so this is exactly the way this relay sits you got your coil going in here and you got these two right here that's this and so on one of those terminals on the vertical ones you need to have power the other side's going to the motor and one of these sides you need to have power. The other side's gonna be grounded from the gem module by way of your washer switch. So 
you're grounding this out, telling the uh, gem module okay, I want to turn on the wash and it turns on the whatever else it decides, you know, might wiper. I mean, it does a lot of different things, but here you got your, you know, because you can turn your washers on when you're in any part. You can have your wipers already on high. You can just push that button and broom shoot water on there. <clears throat> um, snow storms in the salt, I guess that would be where you'd want to do that, but it doesn't matter. You can do it if you want to. So anyways, when you energize the or engage the washer switch by pushing the button in, that's completing a circuit, most likely a ground to here, which is in turn going to be, you know, supplying a ground right here to your washer pump, you know, on this side. I think. No, that's not right. You're supplying a ground to the relay coming from here. So your, your washer pump, you're just supplying a ground to this side of the coil because this side is energized with positive fuse from fuse 12 and you're supplying a ground on this side of the relay and that's what makes it work. And because when we tried it with the scanner and we did all that, we know that all our circuitry and everything is good to this relay from the gem module and from the relay and all that stuff to the pump motor itself. We know that I already had to fix uh, water lines because we had some leakage going on in there and so now we're pretty much just basically at the uh there's there's the wiring inside of the uh uh gem module or from from the gem module to the switch and all that kind of stuff um because we've got other problems with that switch pretty sure it's going to be that switch and we're just going to go ahead that's going to be the easier thing to do is to put in that new switch than it is to take everything apart and, and start trying to trace wiring in there that's just just the way we're going to do it going to be the fastest um if it doesn't work then i'll just save the, save the new switch for something else but all right so we're gonna have to get in here to uh get our switch replaced this is actually what one looks like <coughs> out of it you know this is actually out of a uh like a ford pickup like that one there um, but they use a lot of the same parts and all of these things but it's pretty much gonna go in there like that no it ain't I'm gonna go in there like that so this is a, a smidge different that you know but i just thought i'd pull this out and just you know kind of get show you but we'll show you the new one anyway so anyhow um we have to kind of split this uh deal off here so people call it a clamshell or something like that so we're gonna have to uh i did already had screwed this this uh deal out for the um steering wheel tilt we're gonna have to tilt it down a little bit kind of got it down, down a little bit it might have to actually drop steering column but that's not that hard to do if we do but i'm not sure about that um anyways we've got take this panel off of here Okay, once you pull that off, you gotta pull this off. You start, you know, there's, I already took some of these out. All around there, got one there. You might be able to get by with this. It depends on if we have to drop steering collar or not. Um, if we do, we're gonna have to uh, take off those nuts right there. Those there, and I think there's two more back up on each side, back up in there. You'll see where they're at. But we got Phillips screws in here. Let's do those first. Okay, well, uh, here's the switch. Um, you don't got to do any of this down here. <clears throat> my bad. Well, I guess for you guys, you can learn from my somewhat mistakes. Um, we got a Torx right here. I don't know what size yet. And then we're going to pull it out of there. And, uh, you know, we're actually going to try that one there and just see something changes i know we can't use that one per se but um we're just going to go ahead and try it and make sure and see if it works while we're waiting for the new part to, of this to show up or decide if i'm going to order or not but pretty sure that's the way it's going to be okay we got those off um i believe it was a uh t no not a, that's not the one t15 it was a smidge loose but we got them out real good. They weren't that tight. So what we're going to do now is get these uh, things unplugged here and get that thing pulled out. All right, so we went ahead and just hooked these um, 
connectors up here. So it's just kind of dangling in here, you know, and we got normal things like your right and left turn and all that stuff. What I do notice right off the bat though, well, let's push the washer. Okay, so our washer's now working. So we know that uh, that's all doing its job. The other thing I noticed too, that uh, remember when we had, we turned this thing on the intermittent right here and it would come on the first time and it wouldn't come on again. And we'll turn it on about right there. Should come on about eh, a little bit here. There it goes. Turn it up a little bit more there. Okay, so pretty much confirmed we had us a bad switch. Okay, let's kind of recap a little bit here. Um, why it's, you know, I didn't actually show each and all of these steps, um, namely because I was all out of order and everything. Um, but I just wanted to show you how valuable these these things are. So uh, connect the uh, tester. I don't even know what NGS. I'm, my mind is not thinking today. But they want, you know, retrieve the uh, diagnostic trouble codes. And then we did that on-demand self-test. And um basically just saying hey if you you know we uh basically fixed all or told us all our wiring was good from the gem module out to the machine and the, and the gem modules also you know working we can communicate with it that's good um and you just go through all of these these steps right here and you know what we we just skipped was like say this uh, number uh, three, unplug the wiper switch, you know, and we go through here and we check all of these um, type of deals. We just didn't do that just because we had that other switch, but I thought, you know, I'd maybe just go ahead and show you this. You can pause this video and read all these uh, deals here. We'll go scroll this, that's it. So that's, that's for your windshield washer if they don't work. Um, obviously if your wipers don't work, you're gonna have all of these steps here. You can pause the video and do that so no high speed operation i mean that's you know but get just go and spend the money and get this it's uh it is way way worth it um because and they don't have everything like i couldn't find the uh location of the gem module using this and nor could i find the uh that little relay for um the washer motor I couldn't find it. I had to um, do some other Google searches to find that. But the nice thing of it is, is, is that's still available too. Um, but a lot of times when you're doing this, it's it's just so much nicer just to spend the spend a little bit of money, get all the right stuff, get yourself on the right track. Because last thing you'd want to do is think, oh, that you know, because I was leaning towards the gem module being faulty because of all the other, you know, I figured that the the wipers were working. On every click you do on the intermittent side, they were working. They just come on once, and I was pretty like, man, I'm probably going to have a gem module going bad here. But I went and did all the tests um, through that on-demand self-test and in the um, um, actuation test in the scanner, and everything that pointed to is working. Now these gem modules, um, I don't think uh, Ford makes them anymore, especially not for uh, something this old. So you're really looking at used ones. You're looking at you know remanufactured ones and all that kind of stuff. It's just and they're expensive, and it's just not something you really want to change yourself. I mean the the light switch itself's not. I mean the, not the light switch. The turn signal wiper switch is not cheap in and of itself. But um, I think it's about a hundred dollars, give or take. You might even be able to find a really cheap aftermarket one for a lot less than that off of Amazon if you're comfortable with doing that it's really not that hard to pull in and out of like I said you don't got to take all that lower uh, stuff off because um, you know we were able to get that clamshell off there without any uh, just kind of a little bit of finagling and issue and all that kind of stuff and that thing came right out so anyways um, thought I'd just run through a couple few of that and just give you some ideas and where to go and and I really hope it helps you um, sorry the video is just all bouncing all over the place but um, I'm a one-man show here at this shop and uh, anyways that's just how it goes sometimes so anyways thanks for watching